Okay, back with another project here. I decided to film it after I pulled it apart. It's an old Pioneer P40. It's a point saw. Um, the guy uses it every now and then. Last time he went to use it, he doesn't use it that much. I guess a couple times a year, maybe, or once a year. Anyway, when he went to get it going last, he couldn't get it running. He hasn't had the carburetor rebuilt in years. So, we're going to pull it apart. It's a Tilson carburetor. We're going to open it up. I've already had a quick look in it. And we're going to put a carb kit in it. First thing I like to do is these juts are marked. High is this side, there's an H. Low is this side. So I'm going to turn them in and see where they're at. So low is about one and a half. We'll wind that out. Just slightly under one and a half. I'm tipping this on an angle so that I can get the screw straight up and down. There's a half. One. And a half. Wow. Usually these are around one to the, um, to three quarters anyway. It's at one and a half. We'll line it out. So I'm going to clean this curb up. Gonna put a new fuel filter in it, put some new fuel lines on it. We'll get rid of the old gas out of it. Alrighty, so this is the main diaphragm in it. It's not bad. We've got it apart, we'll put a new one in it. Right, I'm gonna see if it shows. Off to the side right here, it's got a groove cut into it. That groove goes into that, let's see. There's a fork right there. Sorry, I need a better camera. The fork right there anyway, it goes down into it. So I'm going to take this right out as part of cleaning it. So this arm here controls the needle valve to shut the fuel on and off. Needle valve looks really good. Saw doesn't have much running on it. According to the owner anyway. Let's get a bigger screwdriver here. So this here diaphragm, this is not a good sign. The wrinkles in it. These are a little like, um, like a reed, like a valve. It's, I know it's not a real reed. Anyway, it controls the fuel going in and 
This one here should be perfectly flat. It's got a little bit of a curl to it. So it's definitely time for a kit. Here's something I don't like. There's supposed to be a screen right here. This is where the fuel, when it comes in this side, it goes down through there. Somebody's taking the screen out of it. Not a good idea. So when I was off screen there, I was looking down through here to see if there's any light coming through. I don't see squat for light, so there's probably a bit of a debris in there, and that's probably why you couldn't get it going. Not a good idea to run them without a screen. I'll put a screen in it. So what I'm going to do is take and blow air through the high and low speed jets. I'm going to blow air through here, through here, all little passageways and just try and get them cleared out. When I get that done, I'll be back to you. All right, back again. I've got my gaskets. Um, where the heck did the other one go? It's underneath the carburetor. I always take them and set them on and compare them, make sure they're identical. This here gasket on the back plate here that goes down onto here, it's in good condition. I like to leave them alone when they're on there. That's just me. You can change them out if you want. They don't hurt a darn thing. These are the main diaphragms that you're worried about as they dry out, wrinkle up like the other one did, they become no good. So there it's back on, the gasket's on that. I put the screen in, don't know if it'll pick it up, probably not. But anyway, I've installed a new screen, that's a big no-no. <clears throat> so just put this cover back on. If you leave the screen off, you can get debris into some of the passageways in the carburetor. Sometimes you can never get it out. So in my mind, it's a big no-no. Don't do that. If it's plugged, throw it away, get a new one. Don't just take it out and throw it away because it's plugged. I don't know, maybe somebody cleaned it prior and it fell out and I didn't realize it. Probably not though. I've seen them plug right up solid. I like to, like I say, take the needle valve out, this little needle valve, take it out and uh, go to the other side, hold it up to the light and make sure you can see light through it. There's some of them, just blow a little bit of debris off that might be on the needle valve. Sometimes they'll look perfect, it looks like there's nothing on it and it can be right full of fine, fine sediment that you can't see, but it'll starve the machine for fuel. So this little fork again is going to hook onto the needle valve. Got to be careful with the little sp spring underneath there to keep it in place. To be a bit of a bugger. I have little tiny fingers for this and I don't have them. Now this here fork piece needs to be just a smidge above the bottom. 
I don't have any. I've got a gauge for wall burls and zamas. I don't have a gauge for these. I know this saw had been priorly running correctly for them. Um, you know, it's just not running correct right now because it's been sitting around. So the one other thing too, I've made the mistake before. Um, this gasket goes down first. Let's get it the right way here. Then the diaphragm. I've made the mistake of putting down the diaphragm first. Not a good plan. This little fork is a fun little thing. Get hooked onto there. There we go. I'm giving a light little pull on it to see if it's hooked on. It is. Line up all these little tabs. Like that. New diaphragms in. Put the cover back on. Put our screws back in. So earlier when I was doing Cliff's um, old Hornet chainsaw, it was really crappy weather. I can't remember whether it was raining or snowing or what. But I had it sitting right here on this bench and uh, the fluid was literally boiling and I turned on the on button for the for the vibration of the ultrasonic cleaner and when it did it spewed over all over the bench it's been weeks probably six seven weeks this little building just reeks of the cleaner again that's the one bad thing that I don't like about the clean flow product the stink is just unreal you can have a metal object that's been sitting in here take it out of the building even the stink on the metal object will be still on that metal object when you take it out of here for days so you're going to take the high and low speed jet and put them back in you should always remember which one's the high and which one's the low some of them you can't put in like this one didn't want to fit right should pay more attention joe I usually put them on a piece of paper and mark them. So I'm getting the low, I'm taking it down in nice and easy. There it's bottomed out, no real pressure on it. I'm going to back it out half, one, let's start again. Half, one, and not quite a half. Going to do the same with the high speed jet. Wind it in, just go ever so gently and bottom it out. There we go. Half. One. Half. One. Just about half on that one too. Okay, so we'll put those out of the way. Let me rearrange things here and I'll show you how the card goes on. Alright, so we got the carburetor here. First thing we're going to do is take the throttle shaft. We're going to hook it on. Looking for the one with the most wear. So it looks like it's been on the inside one. Right there. Best to hook the um, the throttle on first, and then go to the oh geez, Joe. Let's get her right here. Okay. There's where it went on here. This throttle side I had it backwards. I had to choke out. And then put the choke rod in it. go 
fuel line. I'm going to get a new fuel line for tomorrow. So push that, this fuel line on it for now. I just want to try it. So now this is part of the intake system. I'll just wipe it off here off camera. So now these two screws go through the body of the carburetor. And then they go right through into the reed plate. You should always check the reed plate. I've already pre-done that or done it off camera. Got a little bit of oil on the gasket where it joins the reed. There's a gasket on the back of the carburetor. I like to start both screws and then wind them in. I like to make sure these screws are good and tight so it doesn't draw any air. Then we've got this rubber boot that goes down in here. Then this breather. It's got two grooves that catches on the intake part. Just checking the throttle and choke. I should have did that. Sorry. Should have done that ahead of time. Should always check it. Super, super tired tonight. I've been struggling with a cold for several days. Shouldn't even do this, but the gentleman wants to get his saw back. He needs it. Otherwise, I wouldn't do this if I was tired or not feeling good. So anyway, they're both fine. I find when you do stuff when you're really, really tired and not feeling good, that's when things go wrong. Anyway, we'll get it done for him. Not a big deal. There's several kinds of filters on these saws. I was kind of surprised. When he brought it to me and asked me to fix it, there's a little tab there, it just goes down in the hole. It's an old P40, they were a point saw, these are a really old, old saw. I surprised, you know, that somebody's still using it. These gas caps, they tend to swell up. The ethanol does something to them, they swell up, and you can't get them in or out. Anyway, I'm going to put some fresh fuel in. It's pitch black outside, so you won't be able to see ink. I'm going to take it outside and fire it up. Tomorrow we're going to get some new fuel line. We're going to put new fuel line filter in. Going to put a new recoil rope on. You got to take this off to get out the fuel line. Anyway, I'll bring you back tomorrow when I get the other stuff. Bye for now. Got all the screws loosened. It's gonna make for a long video. If you wanna watch it, 
no problem. Turn it off. Or fast forward through it. Whatever you want. If you're watching it, thanks for stopping in and watching. Always got a long screw in the back corner there, right there, back by the operator handle. There's where the fuel line enters into the tank. So you just literally pull it off from there to the carburetor, and you put a socket on here and unthread it and pull it up and out. We'll do that tomorrow when I get another one. Alright, we'll see you tomorrow.